All right. Uh, this section is about sociological imagination. Um, sociological imagination is one of the, is, is I guess the key, uh, really the key uh, concept that you need to understand in, uh, uh, for sociology. Um, it, it, it is sociological and it's imagination. It does require you to um, imagine um, things to try to see the world in a different way. Um, that's initially why I assigned you guys uh, this little short thing here. It's uh, I'm on your uh, uh, a course page. Uh, it's called uh, the 500 Hats of Bartholomew Cubbins, and that is to be able to see the world from a different way. Um, as if you were King Derwin, if you recall, and you saw the world from that palace, and it's a mighty view. And then if you're on the other end of that view, looking up, as our Bartholomew was, and uh, you see uh, you see that mighty view basically backwards. It's it's quite different. Um, and one of the things that sociological imagination allows us to do is to see the same thing in the world, but different, but from different points of view. The other assignment I gave you guys. Um, was a sociological to read this piece called the sociological imagination, and uh, that piece is uh, by C. Wright Mills. At 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 one point here on on page nine, Mills says uh, um, the fact of uh, contemporary history are also facts about the success and failure of individual men and women. He says this right on the top, top of page nine here. Um, when a society is industrialized, a peasant becomes a worker, a feudal lord is liquefied, or becomes a businessman. When classes rise or fall, a man is employed or unemployed. When the rates of uh, investment go up or down, a man takes new heart or goes broke. When war happens, an insurance salesman becomes a rocket launcher or a store clerk, a radar man. A wife lives alone, a child grows up without a father. He says, neither the life of an individual nor the history of society can be understood without understanding both. And what he's saying here is you can't understand your individual circumstances in life without understanding it, at least the current history in, in, in which your individual circumstances take place. So as the economy goes south, the people lose their job for no fault of their own. Um, but seeing that and being able to attribute the loss of the job to the economy and not to the individual, that is a sociological imagination. Lay down, Cassie. Lay down. That is a sociological imagination. Oftentimes when we lose our job, even in a bad economy, we attribute that loss to ourselves and if we could have only worked harder and, and done more and done this. Um, we wouldn't have lost our job, but in fact, it wouldn't have mattered what we did. We still would have lost our job. Understand? And that is one of the key sociological imagination, key points of the sociological imagination. On page 11, he says, perhaps the most fruitful distinction, right, right here, perhaps the most fruitful distinction within the sociological imagination with which the sociological imagination works is between the personal troubles of melee and the public issues of social structure. This distinction is an essential tool of the sociological imagination and a feature of all classic work in social sciences. So Mills is talking about troubles and issues and he wants to make a distinction between the two. Troubles uh, occur within the character of the individual and within the range of his immediate relations with others. Accordingly, the troubles lie within the realm of the individual and his biographical self. Um, <clears throat> it is things that 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 he experiences. A trouble, a, a trouble is a private matter. He says values cherished by an individual are felt by him to be threatened, for example. So troubles are personal, private matters. Issues, on the other hand, he says, 
have to do with matters that transcend these local environments of the individual and the range of his inner life. The issues go beyond personal troubles. They're social. They're much larger in nature. They have to do with the organization of many miles into institutions of a history of society as a whole. So there's this larger social issue. And this larger social issue of public issues drives these personal troubles. Okay. And uh, if, if you see right here, I've got a little, little slide that I put up. And uh, you can see individuals and personal troubles uh, here, and then the history and personal issues down here, and the socialized imagination in between. And these public issues drive social forces that create these personal troubles. And then these personal troubles. And, and, and individual problems um, uh, can drive us to generate to produce social action. We do things, and those produce history. We write humans write history, people write history, and then we generate public issues. And there's this cycle. And Mills is talking about these two points here, and that history and public issues drive personal troubles. And that, my friends, is the crux of the sociological imagination. So Mill says, for example, again on page 11, consider war. The personal problem of war occurs, uh, when it occurs, maybe how to survive it or how to die in it with honor, how to make money out of it, how to climb into the higher safety of uh, the military ranks, or how to contribute to war's termination. In short, according to one's values, to to find a set of melee and within it to survive the war and make one's death in it meaningful. But the structural issues of war have to do with its cause, with what type of men it throws up into combat, uh, with the effects on the economic, political, family, religious institutions. Um, again, as he said at the beginning, right, he said um, in war, uh, when war happens, an insurance salesman becomes a rocket launcher, a store clerk, a radar man. A wife lives alone. A child grows up without a father. Neither the life of the individual nor the history of a society can be understood without understanding both. You see, he gives an example of unemployment. He says when unemployment is low and you lose your job, that's probably a personal issue. But when a personal trouble but when unemployment's high and you lose your job, that's a public issue. Everybody's experiencing it. Guys, those are big historical social forces that impact people's personal troubles in their individual lives. But their origins are from public issues in history. So when, for example, my wife and I fight about money, um, oftentimes couples fight about money. Um, we're both well educated. I've got a PhD, she's got a master's degree. But we're both teachers. Teachers are not valued in our society. Hence, we don't have very much money, so we often have conflicts about money. If teachers, on the other hand, were valued more in our society, if the public issues were teachers were valued more, the social forces working on us would provide us with a lot more money. We'd be much less inclined to fight and to have personal troubles. Okay. Now, we don't like that. We can generate social action that can change this history. We can go out and protest and, and lobby our congressmen for, and women for uh, better pay and uh, convince people uh, that, that teachers are of value and increase our pay, and then we would have different social forces operating on us, more money, and that would give us less personal troubles. Understanding how this cycle works, that's understanding the sociological imagination. That you read the Mills article, go through that, try to understand that, uh, take a look at this. This is be posted on uh, uh, your course page as well. Um, sociological imagination, one of the key things in understanding sociology and understanding how society plays out, it 
our lives.